trying to call this one the definition of different and the definition of fun as well because it's just a small go-kart feel. No one's got one and it's just so different. We're here with Steve who's arguably got one of the most wildest minis in Australia, rear wheel drive, mid-engine. First question, elephant in the room, why? Because I wanted something different, yeah. pretty much. Had a VTEC Mini prior to this, yeah. and uh, quite a few people are starting to build them in Australia. Overseas have been doing it for some time, so I sold that and said, you know what, I uh, had Subarus back in the day, uh, WRXs, and loved them, loved the box of sounds. Had the Mini as well, so I said, yeah. Yeah. I want to do something different. Do something different. Yeah. So this was your, exactly how this is now, is what you were aiming for before you even started, or is it just? Uh, I think the idea is to say, can I get the engine yeah. into the car first? As soon as I thought, okay, worked out the dimensions and said, okay, I can physically fit it in. Yeah. And then speaking to the engineer and said, is it possible to get it road registered? Once I had those boxes ticked, it sort of, as, as the build went on, I said, okay, I'll add this, I'll add that. So I didn't have this full picture as you see it in my head. It, it developed as it went along or involved. Yeah, I'm not up to date with the minis, but I wasn't sure whether you'd stretched it, but you did say this is a stock, uh, I guess, dimension body, yeah? Yeah, so the, the idea and the challenge was to try and fit it all into the original dimensions of a mini. So no extension on the front, no extension on the on the side, or, or even on the quarters, as you said, to make it fit inside an original spec mini. 15s on a mini is like probably running 25 inch rims on <laughs> on most cars, isn't it? But they don't look, well, it doesn't look out of place. I think it's obviously because of the flares. Yeah, and that's that work. was sort of one of the last yeah. things I did was the flares. So I built the car around the wheels um, because I wanted 15 inch wheels. I had to think about the brakes, think about the drive shafts and etc. Big enough brakes to, to fit and 13 inch wheels is the biggest you go in a mini. So I thought I'd like the 15s, but I've got to make it look in proportion. In proportion. So, You've done that well. So, so I did that, yeah. yeah, 13s on a Mini are quite big, aren't they, generally? Uh, generally, yeah, yeah. Generally, it's, it's one of the bigger wheels in it. A lot of people still like the 10-inch, so the 15s was a, a challenge, but the wheel arches, I think, I've, I've designed them in a way, and they're all metal wheel arches, welded and fabricated, to try and to look like, I guess, a current day car, so a little, you know, an inch strip on the outside edge and, and you know, the correct widths. So tell us about how you, how did you get it in there in terms of this has obviously has a complete new, what originally is left of the underbody I should say? Yeah it is probably. So we have a 1961 body. The car was originally running and registered so what I've done is stripped everything out of it from the seats back. I've cut out the floor and all of the seats obviously have been removed from the rear and then I've built a chassis, a box chassis through from, from the back of the car through to the front. The rest of the mini, so your doors, the, the quarter panels, the bonnet, the guards, the roof, everything else is still mini. So even the tailgate, that's all still mini. So effectively, the whole metal shell is still mini, including the front firewall hasn't mm -hmm. really been touched okay. there. So, okay. Yeah. Was that, what was the biggest hurdle with engineering overall? It wasn't too difficult actually, because I involved the engineer from the start. Yeah. So a lot of people say, can I get my car engineered? And, and they've already built they've the already car. Built so it, yeah. I found that, now, from previous experience, if you get the engineer at the start, you sit down with them for an hour like I did, and you literally said, okay, what modification codes I need, what tests am I going to need to do, and we write down a whole list, and then I start building it and ticking the box along the way. So in terms of hurdles, not really a lot. Torsion tests were required and beaming tests and brake tests and stuff like that, but the rest of it was um, pretty straightforward. That's my big thing, yeah. If I if I couldn't drive this car, I don't want I don't want to build a car for show. It's just not what I do. I want to be able to drive it. Like even just now, just driving down here, you know, go up to Hillsville or Marysville or down the uh, you know the Reefton Spur, or just have a bit of fun and enjoy what it is. That's probably one thing that people have asked the same questions. What does it drive like? And I and I say, to be honest, when I built the car, I thought it would look good, and I was thought it might drive like rubbish, to be honest. But when I finished building it, I'm like, you know what, it actually drives quite well. How is the weight balance of the car? Uh, it's about 100 kilos heavier in the rear than it is in the front. Yeah. So it's not too bad. And that's, that's without me in it. So it's just as it stands now with about three quarters of tank of fuel. Or the front fuel tank has got 45 litres. So if I keep that fairly full, it helps balance it out a little bit more. Is that an issue having your petrol in the front of the car in terms of engineering? No, no, no it's fine. So I built the whole car myself. The only thing I didn't do was the fuel tank for engineering purposes, oh, so you I want see. a specific yeah. style of fuel tank and, and welded to, to meet his requirements, so uh, I did that. In terms of being in the front, everyone gets a little bit concerned, obviously mm. if you have an accident. If you have an accident, yeah. yeah that's, that's 
like anything, I guess, yeah, it's, it's possible things can go wrong, but. Yeah, and obviously that being an EJ engine, it sits low and flat. Being a boxer, it sits quite low, which means the center point of gravity is mm -hmm. quite good. Yeah. The engine does sit right in front of the wheels. So I'm using the rear, uh, sorry, the, the front axles of the Subaru transmission, the five speed, oh, to yep. run mm -hmm. the rear wheels. So if you look where the wheels are, mm -hmm. It's transmission and then engine in front. Um, so it actually balances. It so it's essentially well. exactly how it sits in a WRX. Exactly the, the same. Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's, it's a mid-engine rear-wheel drive Mini sitting in exactly the same uh, orientation. So literally you just push it to the front of the car, exactly the same spot. And you're even using, it looks like a top mount. Yep. Oh, we've just put a process whisk into cooler on our WRX. Very nice quality yeah. product. But you're essentially got, they used to call that a, on the later model WRXs they were mounted in a more vertical. That is a, that's a verticaler. Yep. So yeah, from Process West, yeah, I didn't want to put a front mount given it was going to be so far up yeah. there and lag would be extreme. So I decided to leave the top mount and the verticaler, get a bigger intercooler with Process West and, and run the ducts on the side of the window. Two little fans on the inside that yep. keep air flowing when I'm at a standstill. Okay. But when you're moving, the air goes straight into both sides and through the intercooler and it probably sits I reckon it sits about two to five degrees warmer than ambient temperature. Yeah. The air intake sits inside the engine bay. Even the, this roof is, wow, that's a lot of work. So the, the roof itself is out of an R53 BMW. So what I've done is I've literally cut the roof out of that car. I bought the whole roof all the way down to the A pillars and C pillars and pulled it out because it's all bolted in. And then I welded the uh, BMW mini roof into this one. So it's about an inch and a half and then you weld it in. So it's butt joined, weld it in, brackets underneath for strength. And that was all part of the engineering testing as, as well, so for the body. Is that something that came later or did you always want the roof? No, I always wanted the roof in it. So it was part of the whole build. So the whole build took about two and a half years. So this obviously all had to be sealed off. Being behind you, you don't really get fumes and... No, that so that, cabin. for engineering, you have to have a firewall. There's actually an insulated firewall behind the seats and then there's glass, uh, six mil glass behind it as well. So it has to be sealed top to bottom for that reason, fumes and, and heat. I try to make it look like a supercar in terms of like an, an Audi R8 or a Lamborghini where you can look behind you and see oh, the yeah, engine, yeah, yeah, yeah so. Yeah. The other thing people ask is if it's, um, does it get too hot in there? And a lot of people in the, in the photos, you don't see the firewall and the glass that sort yeah. of sits between you and the engine, so. You know, I always say I don't need heated seats. It's probably one thing I don't need, but it's not overly hot. Yeah, so the seating position is quite upright because of the engine. If I go any more, any more forward, you, you've got no legs. So I think, like I'm six foot, bordering on six foot, and yeah. I get away with it. It's a small price to pay for what is... It's not as bad. I thought I'd have less room in here than I do. Yeah. I guess from an interior perspective, it's running 2004 WRX seats, which I've just had recovered, trying to sort of fit that theme a little bit. All the interior is still the original Mini, floor, etc. The dash I've, is a custom dash, so I've made that out of MDF and it's carbon fibre wrapped. So It's like a homage to the original look, but Yeah, kind of, yeah, yeah. yeah. I like your uh, switch panel there. The switch panel, yeah, it's just, um, well, the Minis normally have the switch panel there, but they have a whole heap of different type of switches, so I wanted to make it consistent. The engine itself is running a Haltech Elite 2500. There's an IC7 dash. It's got a wideband controller. It's got the intake temperature sensor. It's got a couple of fuse boxes, etc., from Haltech. The shifter assembly is out of a, a Toyota MR2, the SW20, except the gear lever's obviously been custom made to suit. One of the only ones you can kind of find that has the, the correct linkage for a rear wheel drive. The, the shifter itself has been uh, extended and all the pivot points are, are a lot higher so it makes the shift back and forth quite short. You've got one big muffler there but the car's yeah. quite fairly quiet really. Yeah it's not overly yeah. loud which is good. It has the boxer sound. You probably hear more engine noise when you're driving than you do hear exhaust noise. That's all been custom made. So again, I did all that myself. It's stainless and TIG welded it all up. Yeah, it does sound like a WRX, but it's a little bit different because I guess you're getting um, engine noises that you don't normally hear yeah. in the front. That's what people say, is it quite yeah. loud inside? And you go, well, if it's just driving normally, like, like now, I could talk to you okay. Yeah. But when I um, you know, put your foot down, you get the turbo, the engine, you don't so much hear the exhaust. No. So how do you go about like servicing it? In terms of access? Quite easy actually. Yeah. Filters underneath, nice and accessible. I've got a scissor hoist at home that comes yeah. up about 900 mil. Oh, so you can access most things from underneath. Yeah. Obviously, yeah, being a Subaru, obviously you can. 
I think there's, you know, in a Subaru, you've got a gap like this, you can yeah. barely get your, yeah. your wrench in. So where I've got quite a large gap, and people don't believe me because it's in a Mini, but mm. the way it's been designed and the subframe that I, that I made for it, I used the original cradle from the Subaru, yes. and then I've just extended off the back of the cradle, I guess made the subframe to house the suspension. And the gaps between my rails and where it normally mounts and the heads is quite large. But obviously you would have thought about this when you're doing it. You think I've got to be able to access. <laughs> you can actually take the windows out. And when I say take the windows, you yep. just unpop the clip and you can swing them right around. So I can actually climb my head into it, do all the spark plugs at head gaskets if you're <laughs> everyone thinks I'm going to blow well, on. Well, I mean, most people, when you're doing head gaskets in a Subaru, it's, it's engine out anyway, so. Well, th that's the good part about this. I've literally got two bolts here, yeah. two there, and two, and two, so there's eight bolts. And then hole I can drop the down. whole engine with suspension, wheels on it, and everything. If I want to access the front, I can take the fire, take the seats out and pull the firewall out, and I can do the timing belts, oh, etc. Right. Yep. So I can do that without pulling it out. Yep. So you've done all of this, essentially, in your garage, yeah? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. So that's th amazing. The challenge was to try and do it in the garage, yeah. at home, Everything from the design, the build, the welding, the engineering side of it, including paint. My brother oh, so you painted paint it yourself? So. Yeah, my brother, yeah. Um, my brother Justin helped me paint it. Uh, we've both been in parts and, and automotive for some time, and he's not a painter, I'm not a painter, but he knows his, his way around a paint gun, so he came over to my house and we literally tarped up the, the garage and we did a, a full paint job, so including all the undercoat, epoxy, high build, and color. Simple question, but how did you learn to do it all? Early on when I was younger, my dad taught me all the basics of how to, you know, weld and use certain tools. And from that point on, I kind of just have a go and I give it a go myself. And if I can't do it, then generally look at YouTube as a really good source at the moment. So heaps of people, you know, fabrication and welding and panel beating and painting. A lot of my learnings are from probably YouTube. You know, everything from cutting the bonnet out to, you know, trying to straighten a panel to even just looking at how to um, how to design a subframe and suspension and geometries and YouTube, just like your best mate. Yeah, wow. And the suspension, what what, yep. what setup are you running there? So the the lower and upper control arms, front and rear, are of a, an NB MX-5. So how do you go, sorry to interrupt you, no, how do you right, go about right. working out? How, how, how do you get, get to, to that, that point? point? Yes. <laughs> There's a few places overseas that do VTEC conversion, all-wheel drive, or all drive conversions, and they use the MX-5 rear suspension setup because you need the rear-wheel drive. Mm -hmm. um, so I sort of took that from there, and I figured I might as well, rather than leave the mini suspension in the front, I might as well use the MX-5 on the front as well. So not many people have done that. They mainly do the, the rear. The MR2, for example, that, that gear linkage is, is from a, like a Factory 5 racing um, company over there they put WRX engines in the same configuration in kit cars. I've got sway bars to put in it yet which I've, I've got all the mounting points I've just got to make the sway bars because like everything it's custom. Then it'll be a, a softer ride in everyday traffic but I can sort of tweak it, tune it up. Just getting back to the engine Steve like what have you done in terms of the engine in terms of hotting it up I guess? Uh, all I've done is literally put a process west intercooler on it. It's all stock turbo. Stock turbo the VF52 turbo which which is doing its job at the moment, it's sitting at about 190 kilowatts yep. at the wheels, but it's the 400 newton meters of torque yeah. in a 900, 920 kilo car. So it's that that feeling of being thrown back in your seat as opposed to high RPM stuff. And also, small cars just feel quick, yes. even when they're not going quick, don't they? Yeah. Yeah. The best part about this is I don't have to, you know, break any world record speed limits to feel quick. So yeah. uh, you sit low to the ground, you kind of feel like you're in a go kart. Mm. So it's, um, it feels quick, even though you, know, you don't have to go super fast. So the bonnet itself is, is again, another custom job for my, uh, that I did at home. So I literally took a, a mini bonnet and cut out uh, the vents and sort of designed it so it looked yeah. like it was some of the race cars have them where they have the radios at the front and allows the air to come through the bonnet. So the idea behind that is based on the fact that my radiator also sits at the front. And that's oh, a Subaru that's a radiator. Subaru radiator, yeah. So the custom fuel tank by Motorsport Engineering Services. So it's a 45 litre alloy tank. You can see I've got the remote master cylinders reservoirs up there for um, the wheelwood pedals. So the front and rear brakes are also MX-5. I think one of the only rather original items is the mini wiper motor. It's probably, <laughs> and the wipers. But even just something as simple as the grill uh, is a mini grill that I've literally taken out every second slat just to kind of open it up and make it look a little bit more aggressive. So the LEDs are really cool, so you can, you can have them set for, um, well I've got them for parkers and 
headlights, but then I've also got the halo rings for your daytime running lights. Indicators are on the bottom, so it separates the headlights from them. So yeah, it works really well. I guess if you've driven a Mini and you can compare this to a Mini, you kind of get it. How do you compare this to your last Honda powered Mini? The Honda powered Mini is one thing, one Mini that I've built and I was really proud of the fact I've built it, but the, you realize things like torque steer was out of control. Yeah. You know, when it comes to the front engine, front, front wheel drive, you know, I'd build another one. If I was going to build a, a Honda one, I'd make it all wheel drive. Okay, yeah. Just just to give you that more stable feel. Hey, thanks for showing us this Mini today. It's a real eye opener and uh, well done because uh, that is a lot of work to do in the space of a couple of years. So. Yeah, no worries. Thanks very much for uh, the catch up and chat. It's been good. We're here with Steve, it's got probably one of the most wildest minis in Australia. That's not an understatement, is it? Mm. No, I've said that the wrong way. <laughs> Overstatement.